Fear Street is back with part two, but is it just as sinister as the first? <laughs> this one time at Bandcamp? What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. We're talking the brand new movie or show on Netflix every weekend, and this time it is part two of Fear Street 1978. We're going to talk about it spoiler-free. Let's do it. So, in part two, Shady Side, 1978, school's out for summer and the activities at Camp Nightwing are about to begin. But when another Shady Sider is possessed with the urge to kill, the fun in the sun becomes a gruesome fight for survival. And this is your classic camp slasher. We've seen a plethora of examples. But is this film able to capitalize not only on the hype, but on the thrills and chills of the first movie. We'll start with the fact that there is a nice sense of atmosphere in this film. One that carries over from the first, absolutely, but since we're going back in time, and we got that tease at the end of the first film, it has to feel more 70s, and down to the interactions between our characters have to feel just a bit different and adjusted to fit the period, and they do a great job of that. They also do a great job of building up a few of these characters, not all of them necessarily, to kind of fit the trope that you expect, have the relationships, one character in particular, she's kind of shunned. Well, actually, there are multiple characters that are kind of outcasts in this movie, but most of the time, the outcasts have a bit of a leg up on those that are considered the cool kids, and that is very much explored in this movie. Now, the question you guys are going to ask is, Austin, does the feel of the first transfer over into the second. You love a movie like this because you get the kills, you get the blood and gore. It ultimately falls right into the slasher genre, but what the first film did is it gave us a really competent story, but also extremely fun action beats in between the story. Now, Fear Street Part 2 has those slasher horror beats but the majority of them don't come into effect until around the halfway point. Prior to that, it's really just about showing these characters and their interactions. And from a character development standpoint, that's really good. But because some of these characters tend to fall so far into those tropes and cliches, it can come across as a little bit of a cheesy vibe. Again, we've seen these camp slashers before and they all kind of follow a very similar concept. This movie, unfortunately, follows that concept to a T, whereas I wanted it to stand out just a little bit, and I wanted it to get to the madness of this witch and what we were kind of learning at the end of the first film. I personally needed that a bit sooner than when we got it. Now, there are teases in the first half of the movie, absolutely, and we get an idea that all of these kids think this girl is crazy because she's been talking about this witch and all of this... Pfft, nonsense that she's been carrying with her and Sadie Sink does an excellent job of allowing you to feel her pain that she's going through it's almost like she's lone wolfing it Emily Rudd plays her sister now these two sisters they are almost complete opposites but at the same time they have their individual quirks to where you can kind of tell uh, that they are indeed sisters and what do I always say I love a story that revolves around a sibling relationship and this somewhat does it I mean that's the main premise but there are a lot of other characters we're trying to focus on like Alice or Tommy and I feel as if this movie may have spent a bit too much time with those supporting characters but not giving us a really compelling and ultimately different story with those characters it's kind of following the same beats of what we've seen before now when we enter uh, what I like to call the cave or this realm of the witch and we really start going full slasher here which is what we've signed up for and it's what we got a lot of in the first film that's when the movie for me really picks up and starts to become thoroughly entertaining. And from the kills to the unexpected nature of what's happening within the movie, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of death here. And one thing I love about this franchise is don't get too attached to these characters because it is not afraid to just rip them out from underneath us. And I'm okay with that. I love when a movie can play with your expectations and build up someone for so long. I do think a bit too long in this second movie, uh, but for so long and then just take them away from you, and I thoroughly enjoy that. It also does, uh, and I won't say when or how, it does a bit of a bait-and-switch in the third act, and I appreciated that as well. 
again, it's just the struggle trying to get through the first, maybe halfway into the second act of this movie because they are really focused on the relationships and just your familiarities with the genre. And that's something I was really hoping they would stay away from. And there are familiar tropes in the first movie, absolutely. But the first movie goes slasher and then lets up. Slasher and then lets up. And it's kind of one after another going back and forth between the relationships and then the horror. This movie, we start getting the good stuff, uh, but it may be too late. I, I feel like some people will check out. I will also say that it sets up some great things for the third film, and the third movie really gave me uh, the witch vibes, and that's kind of the exact thing that I think they need to do in the 1600s, and hopefully it will be less cliche because of that time period. I will say for me personally, it was more of a mixed bag than the first, but I think a lot of fans of the genre may even prefer this one because of the setting and the time period. Part two takes a bit to get there, but it ultimately delivers on its promise of providing plenty of thrills and gore. Before I give you guys my score, thanks so much for watching. If you want to drop this video a thumbs up button and get prepared for the third entry, that will be coming next week. I'm going to go a 62% for my score. Again, a competent slasher on Netflix. This franchise is proving to kind of deliver on that promise. And like I said, just do not get attached to a lot of these characters. And if you are looking for gore and like hard R-rated content in a movie like this, it delivers on that absolutely. So let me know down below, which movie is your favorite so far? Are you looking forward to this and part three? And again, thank you guys for watching Fear Street. More of it is coming. And later on, we have a spoiler review for Black Widow. All right, guys, see you soon.